and welcome to this month's Trade Floor Update. Today I'm joined by Portfolio Manager Adam Bowe. Adam, we've recently seen the Federal Reserve cut interest rates in the US. What is the market expecting and is PIMCO seeing further rate cuts from here? Well, the market's currently pricing a little bit more accommodation as we look into next year. Um, and I think, um, you know, PIMCO's expecting growth in the US and economic data to continue to soften over the coming weeks and quarters. Um, so I think the risk of further rate cuts uh, from the Fed next year is very real. Um, and the important point is it's not just the US and the Federal Reserve. We're going through currently a global monetary easing cycle. So we've seen similar policy accommodation from central banks in Australia, uh, New Zealand, Europe, um, and then closer to home, South Korea and China. Um, so this is, a, this is a global phenomenon. And I think that, that risk of further accommodation as we pass into next year is real. Um, so um, in 20 years, we, we step back for a little, for a minute and the year end approaches and we start peering into 2020, um, I think we're, we, you know, growth is still going to remain fairly fragile um, and although we expect that to start to improve in the back half of 2020, I think it's more likely than not that central banks around the world keep policy accommodative and we remain in this um, anchored interest rate environment. Turn to Australia. Does PIMCO currently see value in state government bonds? And if so, do we have a preference between the states? Good question. So state government bonds, particularly longer dated ones, are one of our preferred sectors at the moment in Australia. Um, when you think about level of interest rates, we've got a, a cash rate at 0.75%. We've got 10 year bonds a little bit above 1% at the moment. Um, so, you know, taking some high quality state government debt, um, you know, and being able to add an additional 40 to 50 basis points of yields is very attractive for core bond funds in this market, we think. Um, so, particularly longer dated bonds. When you, when you think about why investors um, buy bonds and why they invest in bond funds, it's generally, you know, to provide attractive um, real income, so income after inflation. And, um, and for the diversifying defensive characteristics of bonds. So you want the bonds to perform well when you're, the riskier parts of your portfolio don't. Um, and as a sector, that's one of the few sectors um, that can still do that. So longer dated semi-government bonds still provide um, positive real yields and still have that diversifying defensive characteristic of performing well when your when your bond funds don't. Uh, sorry, when your risky part of your portfolio doesn't. Um, so quite attractive for core bond funds at the moment. Um, I also think as you look into next year, if you, if you think about sort of left tail downside risks um, where growth slows and, and the RBA has to do more um, and we get to a situation where they have to start a, you know, a QE program or a bond buying program, um, I think it's an open question whether or not they include state government or semi-government bonds in that program. Um, if they do, it'll be undoubtedly positive for, for state government bonds, so support bright prices in that sector. Um, but even if they don't, I think ultimately it's a, it's a positive catalyst for, for bond prices from state government bonds. And that's because the central bank would be buying Commonwealth government bonds and removing them from the market and crowding investors into state government bonds. Um, so not our base case, but in a left tail event where we, we start to pivot in that direction, I think that's a, that's a positive environment for state government bonds as well. Um, so we're overweight the sector and, and, and you asked about particular issue is we're, we're diversified across names at the moment. Um, if we go back a, a couple of years ago, um, we had quite a big overweight to the AA issuers in states like Queensland and Western Australia um, relative to the AAA states like New South Wales and Victoria um, because you used to be able to pick up an additional 40 to 50 basis points just, just owning the AA's. Um, but over the last couple of years, as growth has become more consistent across the country, that, that spread differential is narrowed and we're now down into the sort of single digits. Um, so much less RV opportunity, relative value opportunity, um, and more just an attractive pickup versus Commonwealth government bonds. Um, so certainly a sector we like in Australia. One final question. Do we currently see any opportunities across the Australian corporate credit landscape? Well, I think as a general comment, um, you know, we're a bit more cautious on generic investment grade credit. Um, and that's, that's sort of a global theme, not just in Australia. Um, and it's not because we think we're not expecting a, a significant pickup in default rates. It's just that the sector's performed really well and spreads have tightened considerably. Um, so we're definitely seeing more opportunities outside generic 
corporate um, credit, but it's sector specific. So we are still finding some um, attractive sectors in, in pockets of the markets. An example of one in Australia um, is Yankee bonds issued by energy companies. So that's um, energy companies in Australia with, uh, with investment grade ratings issuing in US dollars. Um, so these are companies that, household names, everyone's familiar with, um, strong balance sheets supported by really high cash flows because they've gone through a period of sort of significant greenfields um, capital expenditure that's now operational, generating a lot of cash. I mean, you look at spreads, very attractive versus their global peers and other areas of the investment grade market in Australia. So we're talking about spreads of up over 200 basis points in some instances. Um, so we're just referring to cash rates at a three quarters of a percent and 10 year bond rates from the government a little over 1% to pick up an additional 2% on top of that's quite a, quite attractive. So that's a, that's a sector we like. Another sector that we like is, um, is global financials, uh, in particular um, UK senior banks that we've been adding to over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, so that's a sector that, you know, relative to the Australian major banks, um, we can pick up bonds with that have double the spread. So obviously some, some Brexit premium in that, um, but these are major UK banks, senior bonds um, that we expect even in a hard Brexit scenario will remain well capitalised. Um, so that's an example of two sectors, even though we're a little bit more cautious credit in general, two sectors that are still offering attractive spreads. Um, so even in this low interest rate, anchored interest rate environment, we're still finding plenty of opportunities to construct bond portfolios that offer healthy levels of real income. Well, thank you very much, Adam. As always, we really appreciate your insights. Welcome. Thanks for having me.